Now we'll do the same thing with cubic functions. So again, you're going to look for where things are 0 and 1. This is a great example of where it's going to be easy to exaggerate and make a mistake. So first of all, we look at where our function is equal to 0. So where are all the values that y is equal to 0? Well, we have one here, and we have one here. If we go across from 1, there's only one place that it's equal to 1. Careful with your scale here. Notice that the 1 is up here and not just one box. So that's something sometimes I find with uh, questions on quizzes and stuff. Sometimes the scale is different. You can't assume that each part of your graph is equal to 1. Here, the, gra the 1 value is up 2 bars. And so from this, we now have where the graph is equal between 0 and 1. It's going to be above. And after 1, it's going to be below. We look, do we have any other nice values? Well, we don't even have the 4 on the graph, right? Maybe you knew that the square root of 2 was 1.4. So 1.4 on this graph would be about there. Maybe you didn't, so you might not have anything that you could go from other than this. So between 0 and 1, it's going to be slightly above. So here's an example. Slightly above, slightly above again, and then after that, it's going to be below. Here are some examples of exaggerations that could be easy to do in this case. If I had that as being above, can you see that I go over where it's equal to 1? And that would be a problem. Yes? But long, as long as it's below 1, we're not going to be particular about the fact that, OK, this looks like it's at 0.13 as a maximum. The square root of 0.13 is about 0.3 something. So you shouldn't go past a half. They're not going to be particular about that. But what they're going to be particular is if you went past that 1. So had your graph been over 0.5 here, they would have said, that's OK. We're not, as a mental math calculation, you don't need to know your square roots of decimals to certain values. Do you know how to estimate your square root of decimals? Just think of your regular square roots. Like, you know that the square root of 36, right, is 6, right? So how do you use that? as a helpfulness of, of your decimals. If I did 0.6 times 0.6, I get 0.36. So the square root of 0.36 is equal to 0.6, and it's above. So when I had 0.1, when I had over here 0.13, I would say, I know that the square root of 0.09 is decimal 3. So the square root of 0.13 is going to be a little bit higher than 0.3. The square root of 0.16 will be 0.4. The square root of 0.25 will be 0.5. Square root of 0 0.36, 0 0.6. Square root of 0 0.49, 0 0.7. So you could use those as a way to help you estimate. But this is going to be good enough. Notice we sort of have a sharp point at 0. It sort of bounces off there. So this is what this graph is going to look like. Domain and range. The values that are not allowed in your domain are when x is less than negative 1. So our domain here is x is bigger than or equal to negative 1. And our range is y is bigger than or equal to 0. And it does go up forever. So this would be our graph. So the same ideas as before, but we run into some other things that might cause us some issues when we're drawing the above the graph and below the graph. Question number nine for practice.